Today we're going to discuss prescriptive analytics. And the first thing I would like to do is discuss the differences between prescriptive analytics and descriptive and predictive analytics on, to which you were exposed in the previous lectures. Descriptive analytics takes data, collects it, and tries to map the data to patterns that you can understand in the data. And predictive analytics try to take the behavior of consumers and predict from their past behavior what they're going to do in the future. What we're going to do with prescriptions is we're going to try and give a recommendation. We're going to try and say, given um, the prediction that we had before and given the description of how consumers interact uh, with, uh, let's say, companies and with other consumers, can we give a recommendation on what a company needs to do in order to change the behavior of consumers? We will cover uh, four things today. We will cover how to define a prescription tr a problem or how to define a, a goal and what you would like to solve in order to improve the actions of a company. We'll define two terms, which are the objective of a company or the goal of a company. And also we'll try to look at how a company can optimize. What can a company do in order to reach that goal? And what actions can a company do to achieve that goal? Finally, we're gonna look at models. We're going to discuss how taking an action connects to the goal of the company and influences that. And towards the end, we're going to take a very brief introduction into competition or how companies interact and respond to actions by other companies. The first thing I would like to do is tell you what a problem is. Now, it sounds uh, very vague, so I'm going to show an example uh, in a few seconds. But by saying a problem, what I would like to say is I would like to say I need to have a goal, something I would like to maximize, to optimize, to achieve. And I can achieve this goal by taking actions. Now, the way to map how actions influence the goal is called a model. And now let's take a few minutes to look at a very, very uh, unique example that actually you've seen in the previous lecture. So the first example I would like to talk about is how do you find what is the optimal price or the best price to set in order to sell the maximum quantity of product. So in the descriptive lecture, Professor Yenger has shown you before the following demand curve or the following graph. And in this graph, what you can see on the x-axis is the price you set for a product. And on the y-axis, you can see the quantity being sold when you change the price of the product. And as you can see, when you increase the price, the quantity goes down. Now let's try to define an objective or a goal. And the first thing we would like to do is we'd like to say, how can we sell the most quantity of the product? How can we maximize the quantity of the product being sold, right? In this case, the goal or the objective is just to maximize quantity. The quantity, we wanna make it as large as possible. And the action we can take is just a simple action. We can just change the price. We can change the price of the product, increase it or decrease it. And by changing the price, we either encourage or discourage consumers whether to buy or not to buy the product. Finally, we need a model. Now, models can be very, very complex, but in this case, we already have the model. And the model is basically the graph I showed you two slides ago, and you can also see on the bottom right corner. And the model basically tells us if we change the price, let's say if we increase the price, by how much does the quantity go down? For, if we, for example, we look at this graph, we can see that uh, setting a price of one sold the maximum quantity of the product. And the question is, can we change the price even more to do better? Can we use some sort of prediction or recommendation to give uh, to the company to say, can we increase the quantity sold? And the answer is actually yes. We may not be able to you know, give uh, money to people to uh, buy the product. We can actually spend money to get them to uh, buy the product, but we can probably give them the product for free. We can actually set the price to be zero. In this case, we're taking um, the regression we've seen before, or we're kind of extending the line to the left-hand side, and then we can see using the regression equation that if we plug in x equals zero, which means the price equals zero, we'll get a value of y of 10.13, which is the maximum quantity we can sell. So in this example, what I try to show you is we can change the price to increase or decrease the quantity sold. Our goal was to maximize the quantity we sell, and the model was just the graph and the regression equation that Professor Iyengar has shown you, and I've shown you how finding a lower price increases the quantity. 